Hello and welcome to this edition of Here's What's Cooking at Key Corral, Triumph of Love. Not to be confused with Love Hurts from the Canadian band Triumph or, or that forgettable 1997 musical Triumph of Love with F. Murray Abraham or the very stylish Triumph TR6. Now that is a sweet ride. Speaking of sweet rides, this concert bodes to be just that. The 100 Voices of Key Corral, along with professional orchestra and concert pianist Jeffrey Beagle, will present a number of captivating works centering on the themes of love. We'll be presenting several epic tales of love, including the U.S. premiere of The Legend of Bijan and Manja. This evocative work is based on an ancient Farsi love story taken from the Shanama, the Book of Kings, a colossal work written more than 3,000 years ago. This dramatic score is set by Persian composer Farhad Pupel, who will also be with us in residence, helping us to bring his peace to life. In addition, we will feature the choir in three charming settings of Shakespeare Madrigals by Emma Lou Diemer, Daniel Pinkham's Wedding Cantata, and a gorgeous setting of the Scottish tune, O Wally Wally, The Water is Ride, by composer Rene Clausen. And we will feature the orchestra in Mahler's lush and zealously romantic Adagiato from his Symphony No. 5, written as a love letter to his wife Alma, and Farhad Pupel's Childhood Memories, a three-movement Persian suite written in honor of his grandmother. And we will open this eclectic homage to love with a rarely performed gem by John Sibelius titled The Captive Queen. I came across this piece when I was studying all of his works written for orchestra and chorus last summer, and I just fell in love with it. Now, don't get this confused with Billy Ocean's 1984 number one hit, Caribbean Queen. And while the Caribbean Queen dashed by Billy and painted on jeans, John Sibelius's Captive Queen was a bit more restrained. The text of this piece seems on the surface to be a romantic tale of a captive queen trapped in a castle on a hilltop who is rescued by a young man with the strength of 100 men and they all live happily ever after. But the captive queen is actually an allegory. When Russia invaded Finland in 1808, they replaced their language and tried to repress the Finnish culture. Much of the 1800s was characterized by Finnish resistance to their occupiers. The captive queen was composed to honor Johann Snellman, a native senator who advocated for Finnish identity. Sibelius conducted the premiere in 1906, but used the title, There Sings the Queen, instead. This was done to hide the metaphorical message from the Russian censors, that the queen, who was very much loved and had been captured and needed to be freed, just as Finland was very much loved by her people, and needed to be freed from Russian dominance. This 10-minute cantata moves us from the darkness of the enslaved queen on a hill to the exuberant brightness of her rescue. And now, mother, you are free. Come to the daylight. Now the long night is over. Your eyes start to sparkle anew. And woe betide anyone who touches a hair on your head. And he led the queen out from the castle into the open. Towards them a throng was already rushing joyfully, and it seemed the tender and gentle song was heard again, but it was the morning song. The night had passed forever. One of the reasons I'm especially excited about this performance is we get to bring back a good friend and a consummate guest artist, concert pianist Jeffrey Beagle. I have known Jeffrey for many years. He is an artist that can play anything from Bach and Beethoven to Chopin, Gershwin, and the composers of today. In fact, Jeffrey Beagle was the piano soloist on the 2019 Grammy-winning recording with the London Symphony, conducted by Joanne Falada, featuring the music of contemporary composer Kenneth Fuchs. Jeffrey Beagle has been a champion of commissioning new works for piano and orchestra for decades. He has fostered many of these through commission consortiums, where numerous orchestras pool their resources to commission a new work together. The idea certainly makes the opportunity to commission a work more accessible and guarantees the new work numerous performances after its premiere. Jeffrey last performed with Key Corral in 2018 as soloist for Beethoven's Choral Fantasy, a tour de force for piano, 
soloists, choir, and orchestra. Since that time, we have been looking for a new project to do together, and fortunately, that time has finally come. In the spring of 2023, Jeffrey told me of a new commission he had cultivated with an Iranian composer now living in the UK, Farhad Pupal. It was a work for choir, orchestra, and piano soloists. It had been somewhat derailed by the pandemic and was finally getting its world premiere in Ontario with the Winter Symphony Orchestra in November of 2022. We discussed how we almost never hear any music by Persian composers in our Western concert halls. He said it set a tale from the ancient Shanama, the Book of Kings, a poem of more than 50,000 couplets, telling the story of creation and chronicling the legends and kings, the heroes, quests, and mythological creatures at the heart of Persian mythology. He sent me the score and I was blown away. It was a work by an emerging composer with a unique voice and an opportunity to showcase a Persian story more than 3,000 years old by a Persian artist. I said if we can secure the U.S. premiere, we were in. So, February 10 will be only the second performance worldwide of this monumental work, The Legend of Bijan and Manisha. So, before we explore the music, Let's see if I can take one of the 62 stories and 990 chapters from the longest poem in the history of literature and boil it down into a few sentences. Wish me luck. Bijan, a brave young Persian knight, falls in love with Manisha, a princess and daughter of his greatest enemy, King Afra Saib, the tyrant and ruler of the neighboring territory. As kids will do, Manija smuggles Bijan into her father's palace, thinking she can hide him from the tyrant, but the lovers are found out and punished. In his rage, Afra Saib sentences Manija into exile so that both Bijan and Manija are forced to live out their days in the wilderness. Just to be sure Bijan gets the point, King Afra Saib seals him in a deep well, topping it with a massive boulder to imprison him. But Manija was able to find a tiny opening in a gap between the huge stone and the edge of the well, and to get him food and drink. News of Bijan's plight finds its way home, and desperate to get him released, King Khazro of the Persians calls on the renowned warrior Rastam to help because he is Iran's greatest knight and its undefeated hero, known for his horned helmet, cunning nature, and superhuman strength. News reaches Bijan in the well that Rastam has met and taken pity on Manisha. He knows his help is on the way. Sure enough, the greatest hero arrives, heaves the boulder aside, and hauls Bijan out of the well. Together, the three make their escape from the enemy territory and back to Persia, where the loving couple are married, and a great party ensues. Yay! So we have an epic tale, and fortunately for us, Farhad has given us an equally epic score. And he has also given Kikarel a first-time challenge, singing this work in its original language, Farsi. <sighs> I know, that was a bit alarming at first, but I thought to myself, hey, Kikarel has sung in so many languages over the year, from German to Gaelic to French and even a little Klingon for Cirque de Vaux. Remember, three shows only. Don't miss it, March 22nd and 23rd. Tickets on sale now. Seriously, though, it has been a real joy learning this work of Farhad's. It's very imaginative. He does a lot through his music and orchestration to bring out the nuance of the text. To me, all music is really a form of storytelling. And when you add text into the mix, as performers and composers, we really are telling a story. So with new music, I encourage audiences to be ready to take a voyage. A voyage you may not always know where it's heading, but one that you will know will be full of discovery. So before you take this ride, I want to share with you a few points of interest along the way. First off, helping tell our story are three different forces, the orchestra, the choir, and the piano soloist. Sometimes they work together and sometimes alone. Now, while it may not be Farhad's intention, I think of the piano soloist as the character of Bijan. The choir often acts as a narrator and sometimes even as the character Manija herself. The piece opens in darkness. The timpani and low strings create a low rumble while we hear the low instruments 
in the orchestra, tuba, bass trombone, bass clarinet and contrabassoon color the scene. They have this little motif. The text says, a night as black as coal, bedaubed with pitch, dark Ahriman. Ahriman means embodying absolute evil in Islam. Dark Ahriman appeared on every side, like a huge snake whose jaws gape open wide. The men of the choir come in on an open fifth that invokes a sense of mystery. It's G sharp, D sharp, G sharp. When the full choir comes in, we hear the same pitches, G sharp, D sharp, G sharp, but we also add in this note, D natural. So you hear, which adds to the darkness and mystery of the opening. Not long after that, we hear one of the first major themes, which you'll hear throughout the work. I call this the Bond theme, as in Bond, James Bond. Now, I doubt that is what Farhad was thinking, but his theme is very chromatic and has a unique progression that reminds me a lot of the beginning of Goldfinger. Do you remember that? Now, listen to Farhad's theme. It has the same progression as in Goldfinger and ends with a chromatic figure that feels very Persian. Listen to it again. So I'm gonna play for you now a MIDI version of the score. Not real instruments, but synthesized. But this will give you a sense of what it will sound like live. Listen to the Bond theme and how he expands it. And remember that snake we talked about with his jaws open wide? You'll hear right at the end of this excerpt how Farhad writes in music the closing of the snake's jaws. Chomp! Later, you will hear one of the next major themes of the work. I call this Manage's theme. It is first played by the cellos, then the violins, and eventually the altos of the choir when Manage begins to tell her story. It is flowing and beautiful and gives you a sense of an exotic tale unfolding right before our very eyes. Eventually, the piano soloist enters, playing a passage that eventually leads to a dazzling cadenza. After the cadenza, the orchestra, piano soloist, and choir combine for some exceptional storytelling. At one of the more poignant moments near the end, we hear Manija wailing in sorrow in a short, wordless soprano solo over hushed strings. It is Manija's theme, but now ornamented and full of sadness. 
But as you recall from the story, she won't be sad for long. Help is on the way and Bijan will soon be freed. The music takes up a brilliant and heroic note as the work leads to a joyful and blazing conclusion. imagine how beautiful and powerful this work will be live. I hope this video gives you a glimpse of what you can expect for our exciting concert, Triumph of Love, featuring the U.S. premiere of a superb work by a new voice in classical music. I encourage you to come early and enjoy a pre-concert talk with composer Farhad Bupel, concert pianist Jeffrey Beagle, and me as we explore more about this project and the music starting at 3 p.m. Like I said, hearing a new work for the first time is like taking a voyage. There can be something surprising or emotional at every turn. This entire program pulls together so much great music, music that explores the themes of love in so many different ways. I know you will be swept away Saturday, February 10 at 4 p.m. as we present Triumph of Love, a concert full of variety and discovery. See you at the concert. Sign of a lady, sign of a sign of a